All right, everybody, welcome to Jacob's Cops. Welcome to the video. Now, in a second here, we're gonna go out to the lake and test this electronic outboard setup. But I just wanna give you a heads up uh, after the lake shenanigans, um, we're gonna come back to the workshop and I'm just gonna run through some of the outcomes of the whole setup and then some plans for the future with some major power upgrades. So, hope you enjoy the video and then stay tuned afterwards uh, for some technical babble. All right, so we're here on the scene. I'm just gonna get things set up and we'll go through what the plan is today. All right, let's get to it. All right. So today we are going to try the electric outboard engine with my paddleboard. Um, just a quick rundown. This is my outboard setup. Essentially, it is a 9,000 watts electric motor hooked onto this sort of makeshift uh, outboard. Um, some cooling lines, power lines. And this is all going to go to what you'll see here in a minute: a 150 amp um, RC boat speed controller. So we'll see how well that performs. Now, to get this onto the paddleboard, I've made essentially a sort of an outboard transom attachment. So this will go on the back, it'll loop around with this strap, and it'll hug onto the back, of course, with these uh, 3D printed hooks. So that should give me, um, I hope, enough strength along with that to uh, hold the power of that motor. Now, we're obviously not going to use all 9,000 watts of it, probably about 3,000 watts today. We're going to see what that can do to uh, push that paddleboard along. Now to power it, battery-wise, I have these six-cell um, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries from Battery Hookup. I made these uh, at home. If you want to see how I made them, there's a video on my channel. And then to control this uh, whole setup, there's a simple uh, handheld uh, throttle-only controller. So that will um, let me control what's going on. Also going to try this uh, battery I made here. This is a lithium ion battery it's a uh, pretty rugged looking but essentially this is a four cell lithium ion 35 amp hour battery pack so this will give us a little more range not quite the same amount of power as those other ones you saw this supposedly can output 50 amps continuous uh, these battery packs I have two of them can put out 200 amps continuous so a lot more power can come out of these whether the speed controller can actually handle it a little ill or not, whether the speed controller can actually handle it or not, we'll find out. So, yeah, let's get uh, this pumped up, get everything attached, and um, we'll see how it goes. Crap, that is a workout. Get this all hooked up so you can see how it's going. So we'll suck water from the lake, push it through the electronic speed controller, and then this is the output. So it'll go out through around the speed controller, then out back into the lake. So that's my cooling system, and just runs off this 2S battery. It actually goes for like 20-30 minutes, so shouldn't be any issue with the uh, how long it stays going. Right, next thing I'm going to do here is just hook up a battery, make sure I have the right battery profile on this speed controller. So this right here is an electric motor, oh. so it's going to essentially give this thing some power. Oh. Yeah, and it's all going to be throttled by a trigger. I'll do a little bit of that, but <laughs> a little bit of both. I don't blame you, buddy. Yeah. How long will that last? I'm hoping it'll run for about an hour. Oh, you haven't, you haven't tried it yet? First time. Okay, you got a phone with you? you yeah. Call for help? Oh, sure. Yep. <laughs> in my pocket. I, I'll wear my life jacket. Don't worry. No, okay. 911. Yeah. Got it. All 
Alright, so everything, all the wires are hooked up and you'll see... There we go. So let's get it all uh, connected nicely and get her in the water. Holy shit. Right, we're gonna try a different bottom. Let's see how warm these cords. It's not too bad. Nice and cold. Okay, and let's grab this bad boy. This is a big battery. Let's see how it goes. This is going from 4S to 6S. That's a little, a little port throttle. Uh. See how much amps this thing is pulling with this little monitor. Okay, we got 19.45 volts. Let's see what happens when I give her some throttle. Assuming not into the bank though. Let's uh, turn this thing a little bit. These wires are way too small here, but we're just gonna give it a short burst and see what happens. Looks like we got max amperage of 54 amps. 54 amps, so that's what it's sending right now.
Uh, it's pretty fun. Definitely know now I need more power to this thing if I'm going to be going fast. It's pretty cool. Alright, let's dock here for a second. Check some stuff out. Thing's still pumping water, that's good. Is the engine hot? The engine it feels warm but not hot. Like it's I can tell it's not cold, but it's also not at all like it's like room temperature. The water's cold. Let's see here, let's check this stuff out. Batteries feel good. A little warm, but not bad. ESC feels fine. This thing's warm. Huh, that's the only hot part of this whole setup is the pump. Pump's working hard. Nothing's wet in here, that's good. Try this just bring it to shore for a second. Woo. Woo All right, cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's package this stuff up. One thing is that that's uh I guess outboard you would call it. That thing makes it really hard to steer turns really easily so I think in the future I might uh, make it thinner somehow but yeah that is the outboard for the paddle board hope you enjoyed the video next time we're gonna try it with a lot more amps I have a much bigger speed controller that can push out 200 amps I gotta get that programmed and then we'll see what it can do so thanks y'all for watching have a good one and we're back. So let's talk about some of the uh, technical information of what happened in the lake and then what I'm going to do to improve the, uh, the power of this whole setup. So first off, this motor is rated for nine or 100 amps at 90 volts. So that gives us the 9,000 watt rating. You multiply amps times volts, you get watts, and that's your power. So as you saw in the video with the, uh, with the monitor that tells us how many amps, we are running about 20 volts with uh, about 50 amps. So do the math, that's only a thousand watts of the 9,000 watt potential. So really not hitting our goal there. Also, it gives us a, uh, a clear picture of what we can expect out of this 150 amp speed controller. Um, one thing I'm sure most people probably know, but what I've found out is that anytime you have a, a amperage rating on the speed controller, it's putting that at a certain voltage. So this may be, able, may be able to handle 150 amps, but that's only at a certain voltage. Um, it's rated to handle between two and uh, 6S, so between 7.2 volts to 6S, which is like 24 volts. So basically, yeah, I'm sure at 2S, at 7.2 volts, it could probably push that higher amounts of amperage, but um, as you get to a higher voltage, it can really only handle a lower amperage, hence we get basically a maximum output of, of uh, 50 amps. Um, I'm sure you could overload the engine some way and have that push a higher amount or shorter period of time, but it just doesn't have the capacity to push the amount of amps and volts that I need to make this engine really perform the way I want to. So in lieu of that, I'm upgrading my speed controller. Um, I found that if, uh, if I were to continue with this for the electronic surfboard build, I'm just gonna, gonna have the power. So what we're going to do is upgrade this little guy to this behemoth. Now this is a flip ski, or flip sky, sorry, FSESC 75200 uh, with a water cooling jacket. So it, if you go on the flip sky website, you'll, it's commonly called the 75 200 that stands for 75 volts at 200 amps. So this should be able to push a lot of power 
Um, if you multiply those out, you're going to get way more watt capability pushing into this engine than this little guy ever could. Um, this was, I think, $230 on sale, where this was, I think, it was 60 or 70 bucks. So big increase in cost, but I'm just finding that this just can't do what I want it to do. Um, it did work well for kind of a cruising for the, uh, for the paddleboard, but it um, just doesn't do what I want it to do uh, for my purposes, which is having sort of a high speed um, paddleboard and or surfboard. Um, so that's going to be our biggest increase. I'm keeping the batteries. Those work just fine. I'm just not using the potential from those batteries. Um, the other part of things, this uh, handheld um, speed controller, or sorry, a remote, it worked okay. It seemed to cut out here and there. I'm sure it's just connectivity between this and the receiver is just kind of limited, but is what it is. I may upgrade, uh, especially using a larger speed controller, um, more power to manage, and I think I'm gonna want more control. Um, you can upgrade these for, I think, a hundred and some dollars um, off the uh, FlipSky website. They actually give you like a wattage rating and a battery life rating and all that. And they do a better job connecting with these as far as um, just being able to control them. Uh, I'm still learning the the VSEC tool or the, the programming tool for this. So it'll be coming up in a future video on just how well it works. But uh, I'm excited to try more power because this little guy just couldn't push the amps I needed it to push. Um, I can always try different props for different speeds, but I know I'm going to be limited in the long run. And I thought I could get away with using, using this and getting all the speed and power I needed, but um, that's just not going to do it. Um, I guess this is a good moment to realize that, yeah, you want to go sort of on the cheap route for some of this stuff, but um, you do hit limitations, is what it is. As far as this outboard setup, um, I liked it. It worked really well. I'm surprised it didn't you know, break, really. Uh, it's just two um, CNC cut uh, plywood, uh, three quarter inch plywood. But what I think I'm going to do is make a new sort of attachment for this back end that can actually turn a little bit and also um, swing up in case I get into shallow water. But it was fun for testing and uh, it worked really well. Um, so yeah, happy with that. Happy with this setup in general. It's just I think with the higher power, we're going to need more, uh, well, just stronger setup. That all being said, um, this has been a great platform with the paddleboard for testing my electronics and my motor and the props and, and all that. It's, it's a really good system for testing. I definitely want to get this into that electric uh, surfboard once I have this all dialed in. Um, it's tough to record, you know, power outputs and um, kind of look at how everything's working together and check the how hot things are getting um, when you have everything sealed and you're just more or less trying not to sink your surfboard. Uh, with a paddleboard, it's kind of nice. You can just sit there. You can change things around. You saw me go into this box multiple times. If I was doing that with this surfboard, I would have to go onto the beach, get sand in places I don't want it, and, uh, and so on. So this has been kind of nice. So I will be continuing to test with the with the uh, paddleboard, um, and then from there we can uh, install these electronics into the surfboard and really give that a shot with um, maybe some more I guess uh, I don't call it athletic, but just more more fun, more dynamic fun on the water. But this has been really fun for uh, just cruising, and I think it's going to be great for just testing things. So with that technical stuff out of the way. Um, thank you again for watching. If you have questions about any of this, I love to answer the questions in the comments. So leave some comments and uh, look forward to getting uh, this bad boy set up and on the water to see what that can really do to improve the, uh, the overall speed and power. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.